Greetings, YouTube. So Florida has a new uh, person in charge of their education system. One guy named Andy Tuck, I believe. Yes, Florida State Board of Education recently announced a new chairman, Andy Tuck. Now, back when he was the vice chairman, um, he said the following. As a person of faith, I strongly oppose any study of evolutionist fact at all. I'm purely in favor of saying it of staying a theory and only a theory. I won't support any evolution being taught as fact at all in any of our schools. Now, I've said the following a thousand times, but here we go again. If you are trying to replace faith with science or science with faith, you're wrong. Whether you are a fundamentalist theist or you are an anti-theist atheist, you're just wrong. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just quit the game until you understand the rules. But this particular ignoramus is doing a common thing when it comes to evolutionary deniers. They are confusing the colloquial definition of theory with the scientific definition of theory. Now, a scientific theory is a fact. Okay? Fork. That's the theory of gravity. Guess what? No matter how hard I try to believe that that fork is not going to fall, or the fork is going to go upwards, it's going to fall. That's a theory. Most people consider gravity to be a fact. But... In scientific parlance, we have a gravitational theory. It's a really firm, solid theory. Because, well, the fork fell. Evolution is just like that. A really solid theory that has been kicked around for well over a century. And we have a really firm grasp of it. Now, you will hear frequently that scientists are debating the evolutionary theory, and they are. But they're not debating whether the theory is a fact. They're debating their particular take on those facts, because everybody is desperate to get published and to have their name attached to something which is then viewed by, as a breakthrough by their peers, even though amongst lay people, most folks wouldn't be able to tell any of these theories, these little tiny divisions that these theorists are arguing amongst each other. The fighting is so intense because the rewards are so small. Publish or perish, folks. That's what the academic world is like. And everybody wants the big prizes, the grant money, and the actual scientific awards. So they're all desperately trying to place their flag on something and claim it as their own. But none of them are arguing about the fact of evolution. They're just dire, are arguing about the tiny little niggling details. Which protein does what? And which particular trait should be ascribed to which particular animals? Because is the taxonomic tree make any sense? Or do our definitions of what is a cat and what is a dog have some blurry edges? That kind of a thing. <clears throat> Cats and dogs actually do have some blurry edges. For example, cheetahs are kind of a weird thing. They have traits that are both cat-like and dog-like, but it just could be an example of uh, convergent evolution. Another concept that would be debated among scientists, but your average person doesn't ever really need to know what convergent evolution is because it's not going to affect their day-to-day -day life. I know because I'm a, I'm a biology ger a nerd. I am a science geek. I like this kind of thing. I spend time reading up on the details. I'm not an expert, but I'm a really well-educated layperson. So, I have three questions when it comes to evolutionary theory, and I encounter someone that is a denier. Question one. Do animals and plants have offspring? Since you and I are here, the answer to that question is yes. Question two. Are there differences between offspring from the same parents or the same plant? The answer is also yes. 
a frame. And my favorite example to use is my sister and I. My sister and I have different reproductive structures. Uh, my sister is blonde hair and blue eyed. I am brown haired and brown eyed. But we are still genetically linked as siblings. My sister had her DNA done, so essentially I had my DNA done, which is kind of scary because it now means that my DNA essentially is in some database somewhere, and they will just gladly hand that over to law enforcement with just a snap of a finger. Don't like that idea. It's why I personally don't want to be involved in getting my DNA tested because, let's face it, it's not going to be any different than my sister's. If I went to a different company, maybe it'd be interesting to see how they did very slightly. But I'm not going to do that. Her test was good enough for me. And lastly, the last question I ask is, do the differences between siblings or offspring in case of plants, you don't really think of plants as having siblings, um, do those differences offer some disadvantages or advantages depending on the circumstance? I am taller than my sister. She is smarter than I am. She has better eyes. I think I have better hand-eye coordination. So there are differences between us. And the answer to that question is also yes. There are times when you want to be taller or shorter. There are times when you want to have better hand-eye coordination. There are times when you want to have better overall visual acuity. And if they say yes to those questions, they support evolution. Now, I'm sure if I were to ask those questions of this guy, if he could actually get that theistic filter out of his face for five minutes, he would agree to all the questions I just asked. Of course, if he can't get that theistic filter out of his way, then he's just too far gone. But like I said at the beginning of this video, if you are trying to replace science with, ma with faith or faith with science, you're wrong. And Alan Tuck here, he's wrong. But if he's not just wrong, he's scary wrong. Because he's in charge of the education system of an entire state. And he's just told the world that he doesn't believe in science. And he's in charge of teaching children science. There is no controversy to debate. Creation science is not science. It's religion. Intelligent design theory is not a scientific theory. It's religion. It is no different than creationism. They are the exact same. That has been proven in court. So, he's just decided that he's going to shove religion into the school system, particularly Christian religion, which is a violation of the Establishment Clause. So, his ass is going to get sued now that he's in charge. And I hope the ACLU takes this up and they just ream him a new one from end to end. Because faith has no place in a science class. You teach science in a science class. An evolutionary theory is science. It's fact. It's reality. Even the Catholics are on board. But this guy is trying to give a bad name to the phrase Florida man, which is kind of scary. Maybe if he did a little more meth, he'd have a better worldview. But we need fewer social conservatives in positions of authority, and with our current government what it being what it is, we're having more and more social conservatives being put into positions of authority. They are dangerous. Social conservatism is a disease, and here you are seeing an example where one person is going to harm the education of countless thousands of children, tens of thousands of children. I have no idea how many children are in Florida. Hundreds of thousands of children. It's scary, and we need to stop them. And I don't know how. It's really hard to convince someone who is this deeply ignorant that they are this deeply ignorant. This is the Dunning-Kruger effect all over the place. He's convinced himself he knows it because his God in his holy book tells him so. Even though the book was written during the Bronze Age. And you know, we've made some improvements since then. But I'm sure he uses one of these every goddamn day without even batting an eye. 
And this is based on science too, just as firm as evolutionary theory. So let's hope somebody can dope slap some sense into this guy. And let's hope the ACLU is the one swinging the slapper.